Fork Lagoon is approximately 20,000 hectares. Uh, we run about four and a half to 5,000 head of cattle here, depending on the season and which part of the season we're in. The overall operation is about 200,000 hectares under management, about 30,000 head of cattle. The history of our farm and Hewitt Cattle Company more broadly is uh, we are a fourth generation organisation. We are primarily focused on beef production and have been for the last 20 to 25 years. We run what we call a fully integrated supply chain in terms of an actual breeding, um, backgrounding and fattening operation. So traditionally it would probably be broken into two key um, areas which would be breeding and, um, and fattening or trading. Different organisations probably term it a little bit differently but that's how we would, we would class it. But we say that we are fully integrated so uh, we go right back to actually seed stock. So we breed cattle, uh, we breed seed stock and we actually breed our commercial herd background and then fatten for slaughter. Our understanding of the Carbon Farming Initiative is a, is a program designed to uh, create opportunities for farmers to participate in carbon abatement programs. We have varying degrees of CO2 output at different farms depending on their production method style. So the breeding operations produce more CO2 than the actual backgrounding operations. Most of the Hewitt Cattle Company's beef cattle breeding herd run on the northern properties, with young stock from these northern properties trucked down to the southern properties, like Fork Lagoon, for backgrounding and fattening at different times of the year. Fork Lagoon's greenhouse gas emissions output is estimated to be around 6,600 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent each year. And this output includes different types of emissions from different agricultural sources. The major type of greenhouse gas emissions from Fork Lagoon is methane from livestock belching and the major source is the beef cattle stores and backgrounding enterprise. This is in line with Fork Lagoon having a major focus on running beef cattle stores rather than a dominant beef cattle breeding herd. The Hewitt Cattle Company has already put some thought towards greenhouse gas emissions abatement strategies. We would like to explore things like the use of high grade pasture crops such as Lakina which is a crop that's currently used throughout central and northern Queensland. It's a very highly productive crop that's um, used in partnership with high grade pastures. Unfortunately at the moment there's probably a lack of research and development in this area and in terms of both what Lakina can contribute to the carbon farming initiative but to carbon abatement programs across the board. And I think that this is where government and industry together should look to form partnerships in order to actually fast track those development programs. The Hewitt Cattle Company have also implemented soil, pasture and production strategies that they see are beneficial for the environment and go hand in hand with the greenhouse gas emissions abatement strategies. We view things like uh, waste management and our biological systems as critical to our pasture management. For example, one of the really important uh, systems we use is obviously the dun beetle. Uh, so the dun beetle basically ensures that uh, waste produced by the livestock um, is effectively put back into the soils and keeps our soil in tip-top shape, uh, which in turn basically delivers excellent pasture quality for us. The Australian Farm Institute modelled some greenhouse gas emissions abatement scenarios for Fork Lagoon. These hypothetical scenarios include two greenhouse gas emissions reduction options that may become available to beef cattle farmers in the future and a general management change and enterprise structure for this specific farm. One suggested scenario is a dietary supplement for cattle to reduce methane emissions by about 20%. This is the sort of technology that, again, we'd certainly be interested in, but for us it would certainly be based on a cost analysis. The challenge to something like that is obviously the cost of implementation and also the return on the investment. Another scenario is to improve beef cattle genetics to reduce methane emission outputs in the breeding herd by 15%. Keeping in mind the beef cattle breeding herd on Fork Lagoon is much smaller in size, therefore producing less greenhouse gas emissions than the mob of the beef cattle stores. I would hope there would be more successful measures to actually achieve greenhouse abatement programs than something like a breeding program. Although improved breeding genetics might not be an abatement scenario suited for every farm business, it is one area where research is underway. Research is focusing on both breeding animals that produce less methane as well as animals that are simply high in feed conversion efficiency. 
Some early findings show that a 15% reduction in methane is possible through improving beef cattle genetics. Some abatement could also be achieved by early weaning, implementing backgrounding beef cattle stores and a nine-month trading term. And the challenge with an early weaning program in our operation uh, is we again operate across such a large variety of land types uh, that actually being designated to a, a specific early weaning program um, simply is, is not feasible. For example, if we were to wean early on our northern breeding operation, that would mean an earlier inflow of livestock into the southern fattening and backgrounding properties and this obviously would place major pressure on our actual pastures. There's a distinct trade-off between the value of a carbon abatement program through early weaning as opposed to the environmental outcomes for and land management. The Hewitt Cattle Company's goals are to have a sustainable business based on longevity and good farm and land management. Within that framework, can Mick see a future for carbon farming opportunities? I think that the challenges that face our industry at the moment are primarily around profitability. Uh, and from that comes the issue of things like sophistication and the ability of farmers to actually just generally find business strategies to make their businesses more profitable. Now as a result of that, I firmly believe that things like the Carbon Farming Initiative actually will provide farmers with um, ways to achieve additional or multiple revenue streams off their businesses. Now the challenge at, at the moment is obviously the understanding in the industry of what the Carbon Farming Initiative is, but second to that is also the science around it. Where are the opportunities for farmers to actually participate in the Carbon Farming Initiative and how can they achieve for example, carbon credits from projects that they do on their farms. The carbon farming videos have been produced by the Australian Farm Institute and supported by funding from the Australian Government.